Hello, my name is Rachel and recently I've really gotten, gotten into laser engraving and cutting. Like, I started with, uh, this is from, um, these are X-Tool devices, but I started with an F1, which is their uh, like smallest, uh, but it has two types of lasers on it. And it's so much fun, but it's limited because I only have like a four inch workspace that I can make a little bit bigger with a conveyor belt. But you know, can't really go taller, just longer with the conveyor belt. But the cool thing about that one is it's got this plate you can take out and you can carry it around. So you, if you wanted to do like a big table, you could just take the plate out and put it on top of the table and then do it in little grids of four inches. <laughs> but, but I really, I, I, what I had really wanted when I first bought that one was this monster right here. This is what I really wanted, but I didn't want to jump right into this one without being sure I was going to enjoy a laser cutter engraver. So I've had the F1 for probably about three or four months, obsessed with it. And then when they released, this is the P2S. This is a, a slightly improved version of their P2, which is their CO2 laser. Uh, which it's a 55 watt CO2 laser. I don't really completely understand the difference in lasers, but it's, it's very powerful. <laughs> and it can cut pretty thick acrylic and wood. <laughs> but when, when they came out with the uh, improved version, they, they had a special where if you put $30 down, you would get a $300 discount plus a free uh, um, honeycomb panel. And, and I got the whole kit that includes an air purifier because I don't have an easy way to vent out of a window in this space. So anyway, it showed up. <laughs> I'm rambling and rambling. But it showed up. This thing is a beast. It weighs over 100 pounds. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to lift my end of it because Brian obviously helped we get it from the front porch where they dropped it off back here to the detached garage in the very back of the house. <laughs> and then also helped me get it up onto the riser base. I have the riser base right here. Cause like I said, I, I bought the all in one kit, which has the riser base, um, a, uh, uh, conveyor belt for long things. Cause these doors in the front and back come down and you can put longer things in it with the conveyor belt. Also with the riser, cause this has the riser, you can do different lengths so you can do you know, print on top of thicker things than you'd be able to with just the regular machine. And then of course the air purifier, because I'm in this garage space. But this thing, like I said, this thing is massive. I obviously like had to get it set up like this first, so I couldn't do a complete unboxing for you, but I haven't taken anything out of here yet. <laughs> so we're going to unpack what is inside of here and uh, then we're going to do our best to get this thing set up and ready to use. So. On top here we have all the uh, booklets and instructions and it looks like uh, some pieces of wood to practice with as well as our two screens which are for some vents that are in here. I have a, uh, a table set up over here, a little uh, show you here just a little card table set up because we're gonna have to put like antifreeze in here this this thing is i'm a little scared because this thing is uh much more complicated than the first one i got so i'm hoping i can figure all this out but they include masking tape because you need to use this to uh, help when you're configuring the laser to make sure it's set up properly so i'm going to sit all this on the table for now so we can keep unboxing here power cord obviously very important funnel to fill up uh, the thing back here with the water and antifreeze. Oh, this is just uh, to keep the moisture out of the packaging here. It's not important. <laughs> but here we do have a little tool kit with some like pins and a screwdriver and a hex driver. And they actually gave you one of those screwdrivers with the, the base because I did have to assemble this base, but it wasn't hard. It was, if, if you, if you like assembling Ikea furniture, this base was really easy to assemble. <laughs> and this would be our connection cord for the computer to the machine. And, and I will only be able to use one machine at a time because I only have the one laptop. And these are very important. These are the little connection keys. You have to have a connection key installed into the back of the machine 
for it to work. It won't work without this. So this is, uh, you can take it, like if you're worried someone's gonna come in and mess with your settings or uh, maybe you have a child and this is dangerous, you just take this out <laughs> when you're not using it and they won't be able to use it. I feel like there's still something else in here. This feels really heavy. But maybe not. That's weird. Oh, wait. Aha. There's plenty more stuff in here. Oh. So I wasn't sure about this. They actually do include your antifreeze. I went and got some antifreeze out of the shed for us, but I won't need that. And I was a little nervous about that one, too, because that one says don't add water. It's ready already mixed so I was like how's that gonna mess up my water to antifreeze ratio <laughs> but but they provide the antifreeze for you so yay and I did get distilled water um, there was a little confusion between distilled and purified but from what reading I've done purified still has minerals in it which could be bad because that can cause buildup on your tube there's a big glass tube in here that we fill up with this stuff so I, I got the distilled water because that should be completely free of impurities and then they supply the antifreeze. And then we have, I believe this is another hose to connect to our air purifier or to vent it out a window if that's what you're going to do. But the uh, air purifier already came with the hose. I've already got that mostly assembled. I just haven't hooked it to the machine yet. And this is a clip that holds that, um, uh, hose to the uh oh Christ, my brain's not working <laughs> to that air purifier okay keep going here okay i think i have to remove some screws before i can move this piece right here this is the thing that controls the uh the head of the laser i think it's called a gantry but i think i need to remove some of those screws so i can move that so I can get to this piece of foam and then remove more screws. <laughs> and the little screwdriver they give you has a hex side and a uh, Phillips side. And I think we're gonna be using Phillips for this, but let's see here. Unscrew the thumb screws and remove the bracket before use. Oh wait, these are thumb screws. I don't need a screwdriver for this part. There's a little thumb screw. Oh, okay, and that allows me to move this. <laughs> so I just need to unscrew those. Now I can get this foam out. <laughs> As usual, I tried to watch some videos ahead of time, but I always get confused. I don't, I don't know why. They always make it look so much easier than it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not hard, but there's always little things that they skip over that, that I, I miss or they, or maybe they just go over it so fast I miss it. And then I'm like, why isn't anything working? <laughs> All right. So it says remove the screw, remove the screw. So there's a whole bunch of little tabs that say remove the screw. And I'm not sure what order I'm supposed to be doing this in. Oh, and it looks like those uh, screens. I showed you earlier in that one pack are extras because they already have the screens over the vents. They're these little magnetic screens and that's to help keep big particles from getting into your, your fan which vents it and also uh, makes it easier to clean them. Like the old one I think just had a grate that wasn't removable uh, but yeah this way you can easily remove it, scrub it off, clean it, reinstall it and it's magnetic so it's super easy. Okay, so I'm going to go through and try and remove all these little screws. They're all like, it says remove this screw. Yeah. And, and they're hex screws, of course. I'm here trying to use the, uh, the <laughs> Phillips side, but they're little hex screws. Okay, guys, this is going to take me a while because there's one, two, three, four, five I'm on, on the second one six total but I'm on the second one so I'm going to go off for a minute and then I'll come back so I'm not just recording me doing nothing <laughs> okay I got those six screws out and I'm, I 
And I was like, maybe I should be looking at the instruction manual to make sure I'm doing everything in the right order. And apparently I, I did skip ahead on that step because I'm actually supposed to unscrew this base plate screw <laughs> first. So I'm gonna work on that now. <laughs> And that one actually does take the Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> okay, and, and the next part, I think I'm supposed to take this down <laughs> in the base plate that I just unscrewed comes out right here. Okay, so I got that figured out. I mean, a minute looking at those pictures, I'm like, how am I supposed to get that that out? And I was like, oh yeah, this thing comes down. <laughs> so there's still, there's just some foam and some acrylic sheets, which is the rest of your sample kit. Okay, let me get that back in there properly. But it looks like they give you two clear acrylic sheets. That's the really cool thing about this machine is it'll cut any of the uh, colors of acrylic, including clear. The F1 that I have will only do black well, and then I can also get some red, green, and orange cut but it, and engraved, but it's not the best. <laughs> but it does do black well. But this one can do all of the colors, so I'm super excited for that. Back here where it belongs. There we go. And then I'm supposed to put the screw back in that fixes the base plate. But I guess the base plate is removable, so if you, I imagine you'll get like stuff stuck down there. But you can take it out and empty. Let's see if I can find my base plate screw and put that back in. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I cannot get this base plate screw to go back in. Okay, I had to really fight to get those holes aligned so I could get that base plate screw back in. Something really simple that gave me an issue, but <laughs> that is that is completely on me. That is completely user error. Sorry, I just realized I, I rubbed my lips together, <laughs> but I'm wearing lipstick and that, that can be dangerous. I'm getting lipstick everywhere. All right, let's move on. On this other side, there's an emergency stop button and you need to make sure that it's disengaged. It said there was a sticker you needed to remove, but I, I, I didn't have a sticker there. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that was about. And then I have to put that access control key into the back of the machine. So I'm getting my little access control key out of here. And it's just a little like, it's like a little USB, like thumb drive sort of thing. And there's a slot in the back of the machine for that. And you, here was the, where the emergency stop button was. It said there was a sticker like near here or something, but there was no sticker there. So I'm not sure what that was talking about. But this does go, I don't know if you can see here. See, that's got a little key above it. So you do put this in there. So I also completely missed this remove it sticker, which was like kind of half hidden in here. So I just removed that. And then you're supposed to make sure that this is this moves and it seems to be moving fine so everything seems to be moving fine let me close this lid and we have this sticker which also says remove it and it's telling you about the key we just inserted and it's also telling you to make sure to fill it up with antifreeze and the power cord ah, there we go got rid of all that so next, I'm going to have to remove, there's four screws in this top, and I need to get those screws out, and there's two on the other end, and we gotta get this top off, because that's where that glass tube is. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, so here we are at the back of the machine. I did get all four of those screws out, and I don't know if you can see, down here, that's where the exhaust fan is. There's a button right above it. And if you push that button, the fan pops right out. And why this is cool is because it makes it super easy to clean. <laughs> and then this part also slides out, but I think I gotta remove these screws first, <laughs> which I haven't done yet. But that way you can clean your fan easier because the old P2, this was this had four screws in the outside, so it wasn't super easy to get to this. But but now it is. So let me get that back in. 
And then I'm going to try and get back here. I didn't leave myself a lot of room back here <laughs> between my two work areas. I'm going to try and get back here and see if I can get this off because we need to get down in, we need to get inside here next. So there's these, I don't know if you could see that, but there are these paths down along here that you need to get back here and get those up. And that should loosen it enough for us to get this off. I missed a screw. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so there is five screws. Don't do what I did. <laughs> there is a fifth screw hidden in these vents here. <laughs> fifth screw that I missed. Okay. Now that comes right off, nice and easy, easy peasy. <laughs> and here is the glass globe. I'm gonna bring you closer here so you guys can see this. Do you see that? This is the glass tube that I'm gonna be filling with antifreeze. Looks like the thing's down at that end. But I do have to inspect it first to make sure there's no cracks or breaks or anything in it, you know, that might have happened during shipping. So, Nice look in here. Okay, as far as I can tell, it looks fine. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, shut this off and work on the next step. <laughs> okay, I brought you guys over to the other side because the cap where we'll be putting everything in is right here. And it's a push down and turn like a safety cap. <laughs> so I got that off. Got the funnel, funnel in the cap. And then we have these directions. I haven't done the power cord yet, <laughs> but I do need to put, put the power cord on. The power cord actually goes down at that other end where we were right next to the on off switch. Uh, I'll get to that here shortly, but that's, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just regular power cord, free prong, shoved in there. All right. So what you're supposed to do is determine the amount of antifreeze. And if your annual lowest temperature is these things and this is how much antifreeze you need to put in there so i i this is in celsius i don't know celsius fahrenheit conversions <laughs> so i'm gonna shut the camera off for a minute so i can go google that <laughs> so i i'm in uh virginia i'm not far from virginia beach so i'm on the east coast side of Virginia, which is already on the East Coast, but I'm as far East Coast as you can get on East Coast, but a little bit south too, because really close to North Carolina. <laughs> so I feel like the lowest temperatures that we get on average would be maybe negative, I'm uh, not negative, maybe 15 degrees Fahrenheit, which according to Google is negative 9.44 Celsius. So I can go with the negative 10 Celsius, I think. I think that would be accurate. And then that would be um, 280 milliliters of antifreeze. And so there's measurements on the side of the antifreeze. Maybe that'll help me because the, the measurement container I have only has a 500 milliliter marking. It's actually a pitcher, not really a measuring cup. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can figure out how to get 280 milliliters of antifreeze. And I hope I'm, hope I'm calculating that right. I really don't feel like it ever gets lower than that, especially where I am here. I feel like it almost never snows here. Well, uh, further in west, further west, like where I was in Richmond or closer to uh, northern Virginia, D.C., I feel like we, got, we could get down into the single digits occasionally and we had decent amounts of snow. But I feel like where I am now, that isn't quite the case. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that 280 milliliters of antifreeze and hopefully I'm not wrong, and hopefully it doesn't get lower than <laughs> 15 degrees Fahrenheit here. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do have heaters out here, so I, I can't always turn the heaters on if it looks like it's going to get colder than that, but I really don't think it will. <laughs> All right, so let me go figure out 280 milliliters of antifreeze. Okay, so I went and got a measuring cup, and um, since my measuring cup is like 250 and I'm guessing like 275 and 300. I'm gonna do 300 of antifreeze and then instead of for the first filling, it's 800 of distilled water or 820 of distilled water. I'll do 800 of distilled water. So 
that'll be that 20 extra milliliters there. So 300 and 800 instead of 280 and 820. So let me get this poured in here first. And then I'm going to need 800 water. So we're doing, because uh, this cup's small, I have to do 400 and 400 for the water to get me 800. So that's the first round. We're going to add another 300 after the next step. So the next step, I've put in the power cord. I don't know if you can see that right there. Here's the power cord. It goes in right here. I have it plugged into my uh industrial <laughs> extension cord <laughs> so I, i'm definitely not going to be able to run both of these machines at the same time uh, that would be way too much of a power sink i think i think i would blow a circuit but anyway our next step is hopefully you can see the tube because i think we're going to start to see water come in when i turn it on so i'm going to turn it on and we can hear it revving up oh do you see the water going through the tube i don't know if you guys can see that but it's beginning to, to flow through the tubes. Oh, and, and, and that's making a loud grinding noise for some reason. So the water stopped flowing. I'm going to turn that off because I don't like that grinding noise. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but now I'm supposed to put in that other three, 300 um, milliliters of water. So I'm going to go do that. Okay guys, so <laughs> I don't know if you can see me, but I'm putting in the other 300 milliliters of water and you're supposed to watch it. Be careful you don't overflow things. And I can I can see the tank. I have room. Okay. And that sort of filled it up to the bottom of the, the intake spout. And so I think that's good. Put the lid back on. Okay guys, so finished putting in the water and then there's this like extra thing I don't know where I'm at <laughs> okay so I turned the power on okay so the next step is just for me to put this cover back on and put the screws back in so I'm gonna go do that so the next part was hooking up my exhaust hose that goes to my air purifier which I have sitting down on the floor over here it's the big one because you need the big one for this one they just recently released a improved air purifier but this is the old air purifier um <laughs> and and i i know that the uh the the things inside of it the uh filters can get expensive but uh there's also some like ways you can extend the life wash them that sort of thing but anyway so it took me a few minutes to actually be able to get the hose to fit around the flange over here but i was able to do that and then i used the metal thing that they provided to tighten it on uh, on there. So hopefully that will stay in place. So hey guys, I think that scary noise I had when I was getting the water to go through the tube was because I didn't completely remove these brackets, the ones that had the thumb screws. There's a second thumb screw. I thought there was only the one on the side and it moved after that. So I thought it was fine, but there's a second thumb screw that comes off and you have to completely remove the bracket. So, and it even says on here, unscrew the thumb screws and remove the bracket before use. And I just went, um, un unscrew the thumb screw. And I thought that was all you had to do. I thought the thumb screw, for some reason, was the bracket. I was wrong. <laughs> but that's why I was making that terrifying noise a minute ago. I'm pretty sure. I know this thing is loud, but it shouldn't have been grinding like that. But, okay. I got rid of the brackets. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hopefully that didn't uh, hurt anything. And it looks, it looks fine. I think it was just stopping it from going all the way back and I just didn't realize that. But it seems fine now. Um, <laughs> there's, still, there's still several steps we have to go through. Next we have to go over to the computer and then we're gonna have to figure out how to align the, uh, the laser itself. So let's, let's head over to the computer. Okay guys, so I did hook my laptop from the USB drive over to the USB-C here on the P2. Um, there's also an uh, Ethernet cable, so you could directly plug it directly into your network. Um, I think you can also do Wi-Fi, but I have never been able to get the F1 to hook up through Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I just gave up and I just do it hard, like plugged in <laughs> all the time. So anyway, let's open up XCS. 
And also, I mean, the, 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 um, this gives you a few more things like there's a light down on the button over there. That's the power button you have to push to start a job. Uh, this tells you what the different colors mean. And let's see here. Other than that, it's just showing you that it comes with these four little pins. I believe that's these things right here. And they are for holding material down. Oh, I didn't even un unpackage my um, honeycomb because this, this has slats for cutting. But there's also a honeycomb that you can use for cutting that I think is easier to put smaller items on, like especially when I do my scales. So and then and then this just shows you how to clean the fan, which is something you're supposed to do. Um, I'm not sure how often, but at least weekly, I am sure, or as needed. And then it also shows you how to clean the filter screen. But that's it for the that booklet. <laughs> So the rest, I guess we're going to figure out here. And it looks like there's a new version. <laughs> I'm going to download the new version and hope for the best. Because a lot of people have problems when they download the new version of the program. <laughs> and I'm hoping I won't have any problems. <laughs> there we go. Now let's download it. All right, let me just leave that alone. One download in progress, doing good. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so, <laughs> I've, I've worked in IT and somehow I still have issues with all this stuff. And all I can say is I, if I could eventually figure it out, you can figure it out too. <laughs> and most of the issues I have had, like with, with the, uh, when I first got the F1, the issues I had were all pretty much user error, me not understanding the way it worked. <laughs> but I imagine it's going to be similar with this as well. All right, so we've got the download. Let's open that up. Okay, so I need to close. The other version, hopefully, hopefully I wasn't supposed to uh, remove that version first. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, didn't say, it just said that you have to close it. But fingers crossed, a lot of people got stuff on this sign after they downloaded the new version. Oh yay! And everything still looks like it's there for me. Yay! Alright, so new project. <laughs> and let's see if I can figure out how to switch devices. The device to be switched differs from that project file. Okay, so let's switch devices. So I now have the P2S hooked up and they have different screens and there's a camera. <laughs> this one has a camera. The other one, you have to do positioning with um, a little box, a light, light up box that'll show up on your material. Uh, but this one is, should be more accurate because it has two, actually two cameras, which I'm gonna have to figure all that out. <laughs> But it, lo it hooked up, so yay, we made it that much closer. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, figure out where the aligning information is to align the laser before we start. Okay, for me to test and calibrate this laser, I wish they had said something about this ahead of time before you get to all the way to this part. I've got to take this back panel off again because the first mirror is down here next to the two and then the other two mirrors are in the front part. But I've got to make sure this mirror is seated properly first, and I didn't even think to check that because I did not know that was part of the steps. So that would have been a nice little heads up earlier on. While you have this open, be sure that this mirror is seated properly. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> okay, guys. So I was able to find uh, two mirrors. I already put the, the back case on. This mirror is right here. It's got a little thing that you... It's like... And they're magnetically, and, and there's a little thing there you can pull to pull it out to clean it. Um, there's the mirror in the back. I already put the case on, but it was like right here, and it's a little bit harder to get to. Let me just show you the pictures from the computer screen here. Um, but it's like right down there. It's a little bit harder to get to, but I still pulled it out and then put it back in just to make sure I could. And then that's the other one I just showed you. There's supposed to be a third one, but I have no idea where the third one is. But I also, when I did that, I noticed this, where it says remove it. But I'm not sure if I'm supposed to also remove this. Because it's got a little arrow there. So I'm going to pull that out for now. Because I don't know if that's supposed to be removed or not. Because the sticker was up here. But maybe, maybe because it did have the arrow. And I don't know why else why it would need to be there. 
I don't know, I'll keep it, of course, for now until I figure that out. But okay, moving on. <laughs> oh, and one other thing, like the lid doesn't shut flush. You can see it's raised up a little bit there. And I have no idea if that's intentional, if that's something in the construction, if that's a problem, <laughs> no idea. But let's turn this back on, this little on switch. I'm gonna turn it back on. And just to show you, like, there's a display here that just gives you information. It's not a touch screen or anything. Can't really do anything with it. The different color of circles around your on, your start stop switch mean different things. And that's all in the booklet. All right, now let me get back to try and figure this out. I believe 22 Celsius is the temperature of the antifreeze currently. <laughs> and then uh, this is the door is unlocked. And then that'll show a locked door well, if we start a project. Okay, let me keep trying to figure out this uh, configuration thing. Okay, so we're ready for the test. I, I watched a, a short little video on their website about it. So we click here, we go down to device settings, and then we pull this down a little bit further, optical path setup, and hit test. And then we read this. The laser beam is produced by the laser tube reflected by the first and second mirrors passing through the second the first, second, and third optical path holes to the laser module, uh, shown as a red line. So it goes like from back there, up here, to there. Shown as a red line in the figure. To ensure that the laser beam reaches the laser module, you need to test whether it passes properly through the first, second, and third optical path holes. Get your masking tape ready. So they did give us this little bit of masking tape, so we're using that. And hit start. Okay, so these are the things that we need. Here's the tiny little hex key. And then we need the screwdriver and the masking tape. Let's go to next. Move the laser module to the front corner of the machine. Stick masking tape on the hole on the left side of the laser module. Okay, so let's move over here. <laughs> Here we are. All right. So, see if I can figure this out. <laughs> it says to click to move the laser module. Okay, laser module is moved. And I think where the masking tape goes, take a little piece of masking tape off. Let me just double check this, but I think it goes on this circle right here. And get that in there so you get your circle because it needs to be in the center of this circle. Okay, so let's see what the next step is over on that computer. So what we do next, I've got the tape in the right place. You can see where the hole is. We close the lid. Lid's closed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. This this stuff makes me nervous. <laughs> and I don't I don't think you, I don't know if you can see my computer screen. Let's close the lid of the machine and click pulse. And there's a little button that says pulse. So I'm gonna hit that. And then I need to check the mark left by the laser beam on the masking tape. All right, so let's go back over here. And we are off a little bit, like, I don't know if you guys can see here. Let me, let me bring you closer. So you can see there's the masking tape. There is the, the circle. You can sort of see the outlet, the circle, like this is right there. There we go. And the the light is not centered. It's off here to, what would that be? Like the, when I'm looking at it, like left bottom. So let me see what it says about adjusting for that. So it says, see the diameter of the green area illustrates half of the hole. If the mark appears within the green area, select inside. And it is inside, just barely. And if it's outside, select no mark. Okay. So it is inside. Next. Hmm. It says I can use it, but it that that wasn't centered at all. <laughs> Interesting. So I, it, does it need to be centered or does it just need to be in? Let me do some more research. Okay, so apparently there's another one back here that you cover with tape. You can see another hole. So I'm gonna try that one more time and see, I mean, I didn't do anything to change anything here, but 
I'm going to go through that whole setup again and see what happens. <laughs> Hey guys, so I did do that test again, uh, but with including the tape back here, and that one is pretty close to dead center. So I think that one is good, but this one, the mark is still in that same place, which is like the lower right hand corner. And even though it says if it's inside the circle, you're good, I feel like it should be closer to the center. And I know I've seen ways to adjust your mirror a little bit. So I'm gonna try and figure that out. Once again, I'm at a loss. Because I'm trying to, like, these two um, are aligned correctly. I'm getting the in the center um, on both of these pieces of tape, which I'm not even sure I showed you. I'll show you that here in a second. But I wanted to get this third one more centered because it's a little bit far, too far down to the left. It said to loosen these three little screws on the mirror, and then it's like a red light will appear. But no red light is appearing. I... There's a button that says confirm on the laptop, and I don't know if I'm confirming that a red light is appearing, or if I hit that button, then the red light will appear. I'm just confirming I've loosened my, my screws. So anyway, let me show you these other things real quick. One of the pieces of tape back there, and you can see it's pretty decently centered. The other piece of tape goes here on, on the, uh, the second mirror, and that one is also pretty decently centered. I'm working on this final one, which just isn't. And I did loosen the three, the three little screws in question you use this tiny hex key for. You can see that there's one there, one here, and one down here. So I'm just gonna hit the confirm button and maybe that makes the red light appear. Let's find out. Oh, okay, so you have to hit the confirm button to get the red light to appear. And the red light is appearing right where it's currently hitting, so Hopefully the next steps will be a little more clear. Oh, and I did figure out, I know I was talking about this earlier, this is actually so you can get to the back of the mirror when you're configuring it. So you do keep this and this does stay in except for when you're messing with the mirror. Now it's, the next step was telling me to move, there's these three little screws here, let me show you these. Okay guys, <laughs> I actually got the red dot centered and I had recorded it, but I didn't hit record. Oh no. So anyway, what I had to do was I had to use the screwdriver and this one right here, uh, and, and I'll actually show you that top one. You can see right there, that light. The top one will move it those directions. We get it more back to the center. Okay, and then the bottom one moves it more up and down and again get that right back to the center so that top one kind of moved it right to left that bottom one moved it up and down and the red dot does appear to be in the center now so now what i'm going to do is take the little hex key oh where'd it go and i'm going to retighten this one this one and this one the tiny little screws and then we're going to try the pulse test again Okay guys, that made things worse. Uh, it's still coming out through that first hole in the center, but now the second hole, it didn't hit, like at all. <laughs> Much less make it to the third hole. Oh my goodness, so let me try all that again. <laughs> okay guys, I got these first two back to working, but the red spot is nowhere near where it's marking my tape on this final one. So I'm not sure how the red spot helps me at all, to be honest. But I'm going to, because my mark is way up here. So I'm going to try and change this a little bit using those screws again. Hasn't changed anything over here. I needed to move this. I need to, I, I don't know if it stopped it from doing this one again, because when I moved and changed things last time, it stopped this one from working. So I'm going to try that again. Okay, so this one is still working, but this one hasn't changed where it is, so I'm going to try and get back to that. Like, the red light is gone now. <laughs> Gosh darn it. But we're going to try, and I'm not sure which direction I should be moving this in. I'm going to see what that does. Yeah, I don't know if these are messing up this one again, because I'd have to change the tape every time. So no, I don't know if this one's still working. Some people were lucky enough to get this completely calibrated right out of the box and they didn't even need to do any adjustments. <laughs> I saw I saw a lot of that on the Facebook page where people are like, yep, everything was just instantly calibrated, didn't have to worry about it. 
Oh my God. Oh, of course, of course I wouldn't get that lucky. <laughs> I'm gonna try that pulse again. Oh, let me do one more adjustment first. Okay, I'm still getting the, uh, the pulse here, but I don't seem to be getting anything different over here. <laughs> All right. Still not getting anything down here. Uh, like, I don't know why I'm not getting anything different down here, and I've made a bunch of adjustments over here. And it, like, hasn't changed a thing. Oh. Yeah, these two lights are still fine. This light, I'm just not getting anywhere with. Okay, I'll be back, guys. Okay, guys. <laughs> I played around with it some more. And I had to remove the tape from the other two places for it to get here. So the tape was somehow interfering between these two spots. So I had to remove those two pieces of tape. And I am getting now a mark. You can see it's a pretty big burn. Well, maybe, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a pretty big burn mark now in the center of that circle. Um, I, it, the, it's big because I did like three pulses on it. <laughs> but uh, I was able to get the red light back. The red, the red light had disappeared on me. I was able to center the red light and then it appears to be working. I, I need to tighten those screws, those tiny little screws again, because I had to re-loosen them to readjust. Hopefully I don't mess anything up, <laughs> but because I feel like that's what happened last time. But wish me luck, I'll be right back. Okay, so I think it is set up. I, I took the tape off already, but there was a um, burn mark in the center of the tape. It looks like uh, all that trying to adjust, I did some burn marks on the side of the equipment. <laughs> I guess that's that's part of it. <laughs> I have I have so many like cut marks on the plate for my F1. But anyway, that seems to be properly calibrated now. I guess the only thing left to do is to try to do a project. We'll be back. Okay, just to show you what I'm doing. I'm doing this file for a tarot box, which should give me all the parts I need for a box. I, this part was actually under here, but to get it to fit on my two pieces of wood, I had to put it here. Now they did provide us with some three millimeter, uh, like base, is it basswood? Um, but I had some from a previous thing that I bought off of Amazon. So I'm actually using two of those pieces. Uh, all the red lines are getting cut and the, um, the design there will get etched into the lid. And so I have that like, here, let me get off here. So you can see that'll be scored into it. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to turn the rest of the stuff to cut. I only have these two to set to cut, but let me get everything else set up to cut. All right, so now the only thing that gets scored is that design, everything else is a cut. And let me just show you in the machine. So here's my two pieces of wood that are in the machine. I'm not using the little clips that hold it down. I'm not yet sure if that's even, if that's really necessary, but I suppose if you have a lighter piece that would blow around, it might be necessary. And these might be lighter because I don't think these are a full three millimeter. I think these might only be like two millimeter pieces of wood, but we will see. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> see if I get a fire alarm on my first attempt because wood catches fire. <laughs> All right. So when you lift the lid and then close it, it usually gives you a little uh, box here that says to um, refresh the camera. And there's supposed to be two cameras. There's supposed to be like a detailed camera and the wide lens camera. I think this is just the wide lens camera. I'm not sure yet how I would get to the other camera. <laughs> I don't know how all this works yet. As, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with the, the program because I've been using the F1, but... I, the F2, it's, a, it's different. It's set up different. So let's, let's just see what we have here. Oh, here's the cameras. Here's a close shot. I'm not sure what the difference is here. <laughs> okay. So where was that? Was that up here? Close shot. Uh, refresh background, maybe? How do I get off of that? Okay. So I refreshed background. Hopefully that's all I needed to do. <sighs> Let's see what happens though. Let's let's go to process. Let's see what this looks like on the process screen. And everything is laid out there. It kind of shows you the path it's going to take. You have to, it says it's going to take about six minutes. I'm going to have to hit start. And then you have to come over here and hit this button when you're ready. I still have to remove the plastic from all of this. I'm, I'm weird about removing this protective plastic, but I will, I will remove that, I promise. <laughs> 
<laughs> it drives Bryant crazy that I tend to leave the plastic protection covers on forever. Okay. And hopefully, like, you know, this, this makes it where it should be safe to see in. It's got the screen. But hopefully, like, you don't get a lot of light out of this weird, doesn't quite connect right. Anyway, here we go. We're, we're going we're gonna to see what happens. Let's see if we get stopped with a fire alarm. Oh, I totally forgot. I've got to turn this on. Put that on to the max. And then also turn that on there. Oh, and it's already starting. Look at that. It's already starting. It's already starting to suck air out of here. All right. Now let's give this a try. Let's see what happens. Okay guys, so the job is finished. I need to go into settings and have the uh, exhaust go for just a little bit longer than what it currently does. I think it currently goes for 12 seconds and I want it to go for maybe 15, 20 seconds. Um, as you can see from, hopefully I got that footage. <laughs> I showed you that footage. But you can see how the exhaust fan was doing a good job of pulling the smoke to the back of the machine and then hopefully down through to the air purifier. However, I swear I saw a ton of videos where people were like, you can't smell a thing. I can smell burning wood. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like standing next to it, I don't see any smoke. I didn't see any smoke escaping the machine, but it still smells like burning wood. <laughs> so, so I don't know what they mean when, they're, when, when they were like, you can't smell anything. Yeah, yeah even with my brand new <laughs> air purifier with a brand new filter. <laughs> And, and it might have been coming from here. They were always like, you can't smell it until you open the lid, which I'm about to do. I smelled it before. Well, we're about to do, which is open the lid. <laughs> so, and I don't know if that's because my door doesn't like sit completely correctly or if it's just, they were just all lying. <laughs> or they, like, I don't have a sensitive nose. I have terrible allergies. I, I don't, I can't smell a lot of things. So the fact that I can smell it faintly means it's probably stronger than, than what I'm smelling. Anyway, let's look this up. Actually, the exhaust fan is still going, so uh, hopefully that setting was already set up in there. And let me just, and the pool's right out. These are the, ah, the uh, pieces. You did just, for the most part, drop right out. Now I have one under the, so the, there are slats in here you can remove. I also need to get that honeycomb uh, unboxed and set up. Uh, I feel like a lot of people say when cutting the honeycomb is preferable, especially if you're doing smaller things so it won't fall down, like when the slats will fall down through. Like especially since I want to do a lot of um, scales, I, I need a cl more closed surface to get those scales to sit down right there. But anyway, let's take a look at this. This is the lid. I'm going to have to do a little bit of assembly on this box. And I don't have instructions. <laughs> So I'm not 100% certain how this works. So I don't know, because you get these two pieces, I don't know if this is the part that goes on the lid or if you're supposed to put this part in the on the lid. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I the, This box file was, I, I purchased this big thing of files off of the XCS website. They have a section where you can buy you know, files, and you can buy them individually, but they also had some bundles for Halloween. So I bought this huge Halloween bundle. It has a lot of, like, awesome mystical type stuff in it. Um, I do have one piece of wood that didn't quite cut all the way through. Like, this isn't popping out as easily as it should, so I'm going to have to take an X-Acto blade to get that one out. But all the other ones came out perfect. But I know, like, different, uh, these types of woods can have different adhesives in them that can make the cutting a little more difficult uh, but that is the only piece that I did have that sort of issue with so I messed up the wood a little bit forcing that <laughs> I suppose the other the thing what I could have done if I noticed before I pulled it out if I left it in there I could have deleted everything except for this one piece and re-ran it <laughs> and it would have recut but but it's fine 
Um, and then the box just assembles, like I'll have to glue it, of course. But it, it just assembles like this little tab bits. And then I have to figure out how that lid gets assembled so that I can put it on here. But you know, that's not really why we're here. We're just here because of the P2. I don't know why I'm still struggling to put this together. I don't need to do that right now. <laughs> ah, gosh. Sorry guys, I, you know how I get easily distracted. Let me put that to the side for a moment. But anyway, our, my first cut went great. <laughs> I did struggle with that alignment for a little bit, but we got it there. We got there in the end. I've seen people, like, I don't know if you can see my pieces of tape here. Online, people were posting pictures of a lot more tape than this. So I think I did okay. <laughs> Not as lucky as those people who got it completely perfectly calibrated. But I did pretty okay. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And while, while I attempt to learn this machine, it's there's, it's a lot. It's intimidating. Um, you know, and, and I have to step up of at least knowing some of the X-Tool stuff because having played with the F1 for several months. And when I first got that, oh my God, I was so frustrated with that. So I was ready to return it on day one. <laughs> but it was all user error once I got it all figured out. It's been fine. Uh, this one so far is great too. I'm, I'm really excited about all the stuff I'll be able to do with this. But uh, I hope that uh, you maybe learn some from my mistakes if you just got one of these. And you watched, I, I mean, it'd probably be really boring. <laughs> I don't know how exciting these types of videos are, but if you did watch the whole thing, you'd see all my mistakes along the way and maybe not make them. <laughs> so that could that could be helpful. I hope I hope it was helpful in some way. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me while I did this today. Uh, there will be more videos on this in the future <laughs> as I make more projects. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, of course, you can give it a thumbs down. At least tell me all about it in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel. I hope everyone is just staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we're living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.